Hey everybody, welcome to another On The Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you get to see what I'm working on, what I got done, and what is coming up. So this week, um, I painted up some Space Wolves for, as you can see, of course, the battle reports that I posted up today and the review of the Space Wolf Codex. Uh, and I worked on a whole bunch of stuff. It's like, this is like the week of like, licensed games. <laughs> so I got uh, some stuff airbrushed and ready to rock and roll for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Um, and I also put a ton of paint down on my Starks for a Song of Ice and Fire miniature game. So let's show you what's done and we'll show you what's coming up. All right, so here are some Space Wolves I painted up. Mostly just stuff that I didn't have in my old 2008 uh, Space Wolf like collection. So some Primaris guys, I converted up this um, Primaris Lieutenant from Dark Imperium to be a little more Space Wolfy. Gave him an eye patch because you know depth perceptions for cowards, uh, and a Space Wolf power sword and just some other bits and pieces. When I carved his head off, I actually just put on his belt as well too, so he's kind of wearing a wearing a proper hat. Um, and I Space Wolfed up some intercessors from the. Um, Easy to build intercessors from uh, from 40k, and gave him some extra parts. I think this is a Space Wolf Terminator head, some wolf tails, uh, a knife, just odds and ends. So my intercessor squad looks a little more a little more space wolfy, um, and I painted them up all in the uh, Grimnar's Great Company scheme. Then I moved on to some characters. I have actually had this Neil Stormcaller I think sitting in a box for maybe maybe 10 years, a long time, and I never bothered to paint him. Um, but I wanted to try the new Space Wolf Discipline Psychic Powers course in uh, in my battle report, and also just in general, so I painted him up. And of course he would be with Logan, and my um, my Grimnar's Great Company is, uh, or Grimnar's Great Company is uh, not complete, of course, with the, the, the great, um, what is he, the great Rune Priest? He's not the, he's not the chief librarian, because he's not a librarian, he's a Rune Priest, but uh, he is, of course, the um, the head of all of the Rune Priests for the Space Wolf, so I gave him some paint. And then my last, my last of my, my Black Reach Dreadnoughts, I had some parts lying around from the um, Venerable Dreadnought kit, so of course, a, a, was it a Great Axe and a Blizzard Shield, and this is actually just the armor plates put onto the Black Reach Dreadnought. Thanks, thanks, Mike! <laughs> Mike, Mike, um... Uh, I think it gave this to me a couple years ago when I was looking for Black Reach Dreadnoughts to do exactly this and use all my sort of like laying around parts. And this this is the result. So a nice Vendred with um, Blizzard Shield and a, a Fenris and Great Axe just converted out of that. So just basically the arm from that sprue, some of the armor plates from the sprue, a leg plate, uh, the shield, and then just various parts like the smoke launchers and stuff too from that same sprue and it makes a very nice ven dread um of course just in time to to not have my four plus invo anymore i only have a three plus invo so only eight models painted this week but it was really fun to paint some space wolves i think when i start painting new stuff like if um i do the primary stuff that comes in that new two-player uh starter sets we'll probably do them in a different company i might do them as um uh, Ragnar's Great Company, because I have a metal Ragnar Blackman I haven't painted either. And that way my Grimnar's Great Company can kind of be done, and I'll add in some some new stuff from a different younger company, because I feel like there wouldn't be a lot of blood claws in Grimnar's Great Company. They'd mostly be the old salty, salty vets, so this Primaris detachment is the, they're the oldest of the Primaris, kind of, I guess, and uh, and the newer stuff we'll put in um, in Ragnar's Company, where the younger Space Wolves are still proving themselves and stuff, too. So there you go, eight models added to my Space Wolves. And here I sort of put some paint down on my Fallout Wasteland Warfare two-player star set. Um, I already have Nora and Dogmeat painted um, from previous, from the resin ones. But these are the PVCs uh, that come in the two-player starter. So just primed up, and then I gave them a, a basic, like, sort of brown-gray layer of airbrushing. Because I like to build up all of my colors from, like, a common tone. And if you look at this art even... The com this is the same common tone almost in the background of that, <laughs> that piece of art. So all the colors will work up and work down from that. Um, the stress set also comes with a uh, death claw, who is huge, really big. Uh, you get a um, power armor model. You get three. They're just uh, wasteland like survivor types, uh, colonists or whatever. And then super mutants. You get three of those uh, with pipe rifles, uh, pipe like machine gun, and a melee dude with a big sledgehammer, and then uh, two super mutant hounds as well. So they're roughly, I think both of these are roughly 500 points, 500 caps, which is the basic game size for um, Fall Wasteland Warfare. 750 is the standard, and a thousand is like a big game. Uh, and this should be enough for us to try the game out. So, just getting some more terrain prepped, uh, and um, and of course, getting our these guys painted. We'll give this a go really soon. The bulk of this week, of course, was spent painting Starks. Uh, and I have a habit of when I have to crank out like big battalions like this, I do them all at the same time. So, literally, I did all the assembly, all the basing. 
uh, sorry, all the airbrushing, all the basing, um, and then went through and started just pounding in like solid colors. And I've got to do like the skin, the leather, some details, some washes, and then the four character models I'll go back and probably add some detail to and probably gray wind as well. Um, but this is the, the stark half of the two player star set, probably about 66%. I'm gonna say two thirds of the way done. I'll put some highlights and stuff too after doing my washes. Um, but we're gonna try and play this next week. Going on. He's working the Lannisters right now. Uh, and it's about in the same spot, minus the basing, because he does his basing last as opposed to first, because I, I do all the messy stuff first and then work backwards sometimes. And when I do big projects like this, that's how I do it. So there's uh, some Starks on the way. So you'll see this game. Oh, geez, I don't know when it'll come out, but we're probably gonna try and record it next week and give this a go uh, for some rank and flag stuff from Cool Mini. Uh, and yeah, and, and give it a shot, see how it goes. I'm told the Starks are terrible. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how we do. We don't win very much in the, the books and the movies, so on <laughs> the TV show. So we'll see how we do in the game. So we have another on the paint table on the books. I uh, managed to get through another eight miniatures this week and put paint down to another 48 that'll hopefully be done next week for another 50 on the paint tally. That was a good week, got a lot of work done, um, and I'm excited to try out two new games too for this year. 2018's been a, a year of about a bajillion new games. <laughs> so we'll see uh, We'll see how that goes. Now if you wanna watch, of course, um, my battle report and read my review, or sorry, see my review of the new Space Wolf Codex, you can click below and check that out. Uh, there's two games, one on my channel, one on Owen's, and of course, um, my sort of like top things that you should know about the new Space Wolf Codex. So we'll see you for more on the paint table next week. Till then I'm Ash, up again. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.